Boom. <clears throat> What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Holics podcast. And we have a special NBA edition today. And we are in the middle of our NBA mini series where we are talking some NBA draft prospects. Essentially, in every episode, we're taking an NBA draft prospect, breaking him down, talking about his strengths and weaknesses, talking about a best fit, and then giving an NBA comparison. So my name is Jordan Jica, a.k.a. Dr. Fantasy, and I am here today with Zach. And Zach, you ready to talk about Kira Lewis today? Um, sure, let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> not very enthusiastic and we're recording another episode about another prospect that zach's very excited about today so i think he's just gonna nap until that one but i'll kick it off with a, a little summary about kira lewis here he's a 6'3 sophomore out of the university of alabama not necessarily known for their basketball prowess there but he was a two-year starter he showed a ton of improvement last season he averaged 18 points per game, had five assists, five rebounds, uh, averaged 37 minutes, so he played a good amount of time there. Had a total field goal percentage of 44%. Threes were only at 36%, so that's something he could improve upon there. Um, a lot of drafts have him going around the late first. I've seen him go early second. I've even seen him go in the lottery in a few, late lottery in a few uh mocks that i've read you know and it's one of those drafts and you'll hear us talk about it quite a bit it's so shallow that i really think that you could swap out guys from six to 20 and they could go anywhere in the draft so i think it's really hard to project this year even number one i would say most season there's a very clear-cut number one but i mean it could go in any direction so uh what notes do you have on kira lewis Zach? uh yeah like you said he's probably if this was a deeper class, uh, he's probably a second round pick. If it's if this class is much deeper, uh, like I said, he can he plays he plays the point guard position position really well. If you see his, you see he improved he improved from uh, his previous season. He can score. That's the one thing you can say about. Uh, I mean, he could use his three point percentage could use a little bit of work. But he knows how to score the basketball. Uh, so that's really, that's going to go. He knows, he, I think he, he, he's very aggressive. He knows when to get his shot. So, and that's, that's something you can't say about a lot of, not a lot of guys coming out of college are know when to get their shot. And right. He, he, he can certainly get his shot when he wants to get a shot. Yeah, no, and I mean, he's super athletic. I think that's probably his biggest strength, in my opinion. Really fast. We were talking about it before we started recording. He's a little skinny, so he's not going to be the most physical offensive force. Mm -hmm. Defensively, he's a solid defender. It's a little questionable. But the thing that I think people will worry about the most with his defensive game is that it's really one-dimensional. I mean, he's going to be guarding the other team's one guard. And he's really not going to be able to guard any bigger twos or threes or, you know, he's going to be really limited as far as who he can defend. So a few NBA comparisons uh, that we have for him. One that I had was Alfred Payton, uh, you know, very, once again, another smaller guard, very one dimensional, questionable defense. Um, but I mean, he's athletic enough where he's going to find a role somewhere. I see him long term being more of a a bench guard, you know, might get some spot starts if their starting point guard gets hurt, the team that he's on, but I have him as an Alfred Payton type. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would agree there. I would say if he hits his potential and if he hits his ceiling, I think he can be close to what John Morant was last year. That's, that's, he's going to have to do a lot of, a lot of, a lot of growing up and, uh, hell of a lot of improvement to his game, but it's definitely the John Morant potential is in there. Yep. So I think that's a, that's, that's, that's the ceiling. Sure. Yeah. And I, the key word there that I think you said was John Morant last year. I think that everyone assumes mm -hmm. that Jaw is going to keep improving. And I think that if Lewis's career ended, like Jaws started, 
that people would be pretty happy with that. I mean, they're built similarly, both very speedy, very streaky shooters. So I don't think that's an unfair uh, comparison either. So I'm going to end it off with a, a good fit for him. I had him going to the Phoenix Suns. The reason for that is with him being such a speedy player, I think he really needs to go to a team that plays a more up-tempo style. And uh, the Suns were one of the top 10 fastest playing teams last year. So, uh, you know, they kind of need some guard depth too. They have Ricky Rubio and Devin Booker. And behind those two, they don't really have anyone. So I think Lewis mm-hmm. could fit in right off the bench right away, would fit into their system. He doesn't necessarily have to be the the main scorer there because he could dump it off to uh, Devin Booker, uh, Aiton down low, I mean, Ubri, I mean, anybody that's there. So I uh, I think that that would be a good fit for him. Uh, yeah, I see that. I see that. I also see maybe uh, like the Washington Wizards, maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, see, you have you'll have John Wall back next year and Bradley Beal's there. But if you look at their their uh, bench depth in terms of like point guards and guards in general, like can you name a bench guard for the Wizards? I, mean, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't. I know Ish Smith <laughs> was there at one point, but I have no idea maybe. if he is. Come on. <laughs> I, I I mean I like Lewis enough that that he could be better than Ish Smith. Oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> but yeah, I think the Washington. I think he. I think he would fit well there. Nice bench, uh, bench uh, guard presence that could just get things going for them off the bench. I mean, the Wizards bench isn't that good, so having a guy that uh, can help set up that unit would be would be a good would be a good fit. Yeah, no, I think that's a good one, too. So that's all that we have on Kira Lewis today. Next installment, we will be talking about Josh Green, and that's Zach's boy. So tune in for that one. You might need to set aside three or four hours to watch that one. So thank you guys for watching. If you don't already, make sure you subscribe to the Fantasy Holics on YouTube. You can like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at FantasyHolics1. And check out our new website at TheFantasyHolics.com. So we are tuning out and we will see you guys next time.